Joining me now from Savannah is NBC's Vaughn Hilliard. And Aaron Gilchrist has the latest on the Harris campaign from the White House. Uh, so, Vaughn, Trump is back in Georgia after several weeks for what was set to be an economy speech. W was that what we heard from the former president today? We heard some on the economy, and in typical Donald Trump fashion, he veered off in many different tangents. But on the economy front, let's just focus on what he did say, if we could, Ryan. And that was a very aggressive use of the executive branch's potential authorities. And for Donald Trump specifically, that was suggestions that he would, not with Congress's help or, or backing, but that he would go and impose massive tariffs on imports uh, of goods into the United States. He suggested that, for example, uh, auto manufacturing that comes from Mexico, imports from Mexico, would be tariffed at 100 percent. He has suggested that he would put a baseline 10 percent tariffs on all of the more than three trillion dollars uh, worth of goods coming into the U.S. annually. But for him, just another uh, example, he made the case that he would turn German car manufacturers into American car manufacturers because of the extent to which he would wield the use of tariffs and unilaterally decide to apply them on imported goods. Yesterday, when he was in Pennsylvania, he uh, uh, told uh, some folks that were gathered there that he would put a 200 percent tariff on the American company, John Deere, on all manufacturing products that are built overseas and then brought into the United States. And so for Donald Trump, he is making the case that this would all but force American companies or even overseas companies to relocate manufacturing plants here. Of course, the concern among a great many economists is the potential impact that it would have on American taxpayers, because it's American taxpayers who are the ones that ultimately pay uh, for those tariffs on the imported goods. And ultimately, the concern as to whether the U.S. would be able to export its goods, which it relies on economically here in communities across the country. And even uh, uh, Mitch McConnell just this afternoon suggested that he is opposed to these far-reaching tariffs here. But yet Donald Trump is telling communities like this one here in Savannah that that's exactly what he would do to try to increase manufacturing here domestically. And we know about this ongoing uh, kind of war and, and maybe just a, a frenemy relationship that he has with uh, Georgia's governor, Brian Kemp. He, he seemed to strike a more conciliar, right. conciliatory tone with him right now. He, he's bashed him in the past. Is this a sign of the situation in Georgia and that he needs Kemp's help in order to win? Right. In, in 2022, he even ran another Republican against Brian Kemp when he was running for re-election as Georgia governor. Now, that uh, candidate who he endorsed lost to Brian Kemp by almost 50 percentage points, which just goes to show the popularity of the conservative governor here in the state. And Brian Kemp, we didn't see him here at this rally alongside of Donald Trump, but he has openly suggested that he intends to vote for Donald Trump and has even appeared at a fundraiser for his 2024 campaign. Of course, he got the ire of Donald Trump in 2020 when he certified uh, Donald Trump's Georgia loss here, a close loss, which Donald Trump claims uh, uh, falsely that he won the state of Georgia. And really, they've had a tense relationship ever since then. Brian Kemp, we should note, has not closed the door to potentially seeking higher office, whether it be the Senate or even the presidency himself down the road here. But these two are sort of building this symbiotic relationship, and it is a very much of a recognition from Donald Trump that if Georgia, as the polls show, is in fact a close race again here in November, that Brian Kemp would only help him and to try to undercut him is not much of a sell to Georgia voters. And the least that he should do, as he did here this afternoon on stage, is to at least offer some praise, albeit some short-winded praise. <laughs> I guess when it comes to Donald Trump, you take what you can get. All right, Vaughn, thank you for that report from Savannah. Let's go now to Aaron. Uh, Aaron, the Harris campaign trying to uh, trying to tie Trump to Georgia's six-week abortion ban uh, during his visit there today. Uh, he was there to talk about the economy. Uh, is this how they think they should counter this issue going forward? Well, this is certainly the strategy that they think is appropriate right now, Ryan. We remember last week we saw this reporting from ProPublica about the two Georgia women who died from complications after they were denied treatment. The Harris campaign says 
uh, that was the result of Georgia's uh, what they call an extreme abortion ban in that state, one that they say Donald Trump is responsible for, one that they say is a part of his legacy. And so today, I think you're, you're seeing the, the Harris campaign and the Democratic National Committee uh, roll out statements that uh, tie Donald Trump to this abortion ban in Georgia. Uh, the DNC also rolled out several billboards across the Savannah metro area, uh, making that same suggestion that these deaths that have happened and potential problems that other women could see as it relates to abortion care or IVF treatment, uh, all those things could be endangered by the actions taken by former President Trump. And so uh, that is something that we've seen the, the campaign talk about. We've heard the vice president talk about every surrogate. Uh, talk about uh, really across the country, but right now in Georgia, the campaign clearly believes that this is something that they need to elevate so the audience is there, the women uh, and the people who support them in Georgia can see this uh, and, and understand that the campaign believes that this is something they can tie Donald Trump directly to. And as we mentioned, Harris is thinking about a visit to the border when she travels to Arizona on Friday. Is the campaign feel that it's important to tackle some of these weakest issues just and go head on with these uh, just a few weeks to go? Yeah, so the campaign doesn't necessarily believe that the vice president's position on immigration and border security is, is one that is weak. Obviously, polling suggests an NBC News poll uh, just over the weekend uh, pointed to uh, Donald Trump showing greater strength on the issue of border security uh, and controlling immigration. At the same time, the vice president has spoken about it. She has said that Donald Trump is responsible for the uh, bill that did not make it out of Congress earlier this year. Uh, and so uh, one source tells us that we should expect the vice president when she goes to Arizona this week to talk about border control, uh, uh, border security rather, and, and controlling the immigration issue. There are questions though at this point about whether she will actually go to the border, potentially visiting a border patrol facility in Arizona. That's something that we understand from sources is being considered by the Harris campaign at this point, but it would still be something that needs to be finalized and logistics would have to be worked out for that to happen when the vice president goes to Arizona on Friday, Ryan. Okay, Aaron, thank you for that update. We appreciate it. After Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.